listen only mode. Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's Florida Brokers Roundtable with our Florida broker, Robert Milliken, and his guest, Keith Lemelin. Before we begin, we're excited about a few new highlight, highlights here at Allison James Estates and Homes, the first being our coaching program. This is a program that caters to all levels of production. If you want to be coached by a top producing agent, understand your weaknesses and how to overcome them, and increase your social media and marketing knowledge, this program is for you. Other highlights are Real Estate Tools and Technology Tuesday and our new Fun Facts Friday featuring our very own Tori Hunter. This will also go over everything that is related to the tools that AJI offers. Both of these, Tuesday and Friday, are live on Facebook. Lastly, please don't hesitate to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me for all of your questions concerning our systems here at Allison James or if you just need a refresher course on AJI University. You can reach me, Tracy Hansen, at support at AJICorporate.com. And without further ado, I'll hand the spotlight over to Robert and Keith. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, welcome to you also here, Keith, and we're glad to have you here today, and thank you for the intro, Tracy. You're welcome. So, uh, basically, what I wanted to do today that I think would be a fun conversation to have is um, talk about how to prepare your sellers and set expectations um, for getting the home ready to market. And, and, you know, specifically as it relates to Keith, how to take, you know, how to get it ready to take photos, take videos. And um, Keith, I'll brag on for a moment, um, is our, our marketing manager at the Preferred Shore team that we run out of Sarasota. And uh, he is responsible for all of the photography that you see at our, on our listings, as well as all of the videos that you see. You can find them on our YouTube channel or on Facebook. Um, some of you may follow us at facebook.com slash preferred shore. So uh, if you wanna check out a little bit of Keith's work to bring some context to the conversation, you could uh, look that up later on, or if you're at a computer now, but does some really, really amazing work. And he um, was extremely successful in a past life as a YouTuber and, and honed all of his uh, video skills in the YouTube world and uh, came to real estate with a, with a fresh eye and a creative approach. And he just does incredible work. So um, just wanted to have a conversation with him because he, you know, doing hundreds of houses now is encountering some things that are going right, some challenges that, that aren't always going right whenever he shows up at someone's house. So I thought it would be a great conversation to have. So. <laughs> right, I think, I like when you talked about expectations. And I, I think our agents at Preferred Shore do a really good job in managing the expectations or in a, in a sense where it's like, they give these uh, homeowners really high expectations, I think. Mm -hmm. But that kind of works out for me because they'll maybe a little prep the house a little better. They'll clean up, um, move the cars out of the driveway. They'll get all the garbage or declutter the house most of the time. And mm -hmm. that kind of makes their, so their expectations are really high to have like high quality photos and video and the drone and mm -hmm. all that. So when we get into the house, I think it's great that we have those expectations like, hey, we're gonna do some really good photos and video, but we need some help from you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's a great point. And you glazed over a lot of important things quickly there. Because <laughs> um, do, do you have a checklist of sorts that seems to help to help sellers? And right. So we do have a checklist. We send sort of some of our agents that some of them use and some of them don't. Um, so basically, it's a checklist for the home sellers to see like, hey, this is kind of some things that we want you to kind of think about before the photographer gets here or what we should have done. Um, for example, like we I said, the cars and driveway, let's get those out of there. Mm -hmm. um, inside the house, let's um, declutter, just kind of get everything, as much things off the tables and counters and walls as possible. Like one, for example, you never think about is the, all the magnets on your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And that's point. <laughs> just mm -hmm. getting that stuff off there makes a huge difference. Yeah, so, you know, and, and, I, and, and the list, by the way, I'm sure we can share if anybody would, would like to request, make a request for that. But so what are, what are some other things that, you know, cause I would have never thought of um, refrigerator magnets. That's interesting. I know obviously, you know, I'm sure you don't want clutter on kitchen counters as much as possible. Is there anything, you know, in, in bathrooms maybe like, you know. Yeah, toilet much, seats down. Toilet seats down. <laughs> too, oh man, all that, all that shampoo stuff, get it out of there. Sh no shampoo in the showers. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think my list is that extensive. But, <laughs> but yeah, but, I mean, and those, those little details do make a big difference, though, because if, you know, you can create the HGTV effect as much as possible, I mean, that is ultimately what buyers are looking for, and they're searching online, and they're looking at those photos. So, um, mm -hmm. you like, yeah, I think the idea is you want to have the home buyers be able to perceive their items, I guess, in the house. Mm -hmm. So the less of the other people's things that are in there, the more that someone else can kind of visualize their things. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, uh, you know, <laughs> to talk, some extent. Talking with buyers a lot, I, I do see that there are times that, you know, even though they are pres presently living, you know, maybe in a, in a more cluttered way, they aspire to be neat, <laughs> neat and tidy. And even after, they, even after they do buy the home, they're probably going to continue, you know, living in a cluttered fashion which is okay that's fine it happens at my house sometimes too not gonna lie <laughs> but you know everybody aspires for that certain image and I think that if you can convey you know what they want in the photos and you know and in, in meaning lifestyle as much as the actual house you know if they see a neat tidy space that's ideally what they what they want and what they aspire to so that's good stuff so um, you know and going around you generally and, and it's different for different things so you know photos are going to be a little bit different than video but I'm wondering you know do you like ceiling fans on or off always or? turn the fans off oh okay. and put really those, and then turn the lights on okay so why fans off only I because um, for the photos anyways the uh, when you're working with cameras the shutter speed is kind of too slow for the fan movement so you just kind of a big blur in the ceiling mm -hmm. if you have that ceiling fan on so mm -hmm. it's pre preferable to have it nice and clear so turn the fans off okay so fans off all the lights on window blinds open preferably opened yeah unless you're trying to hide something then you can <laughs> <laughs> so are they so and are the blinds like completely like if it like a like vertical or whatever are they is the whole window exposed or you just like the slats open or? so mostly I like to have the uh, those window blinds like all the way up but like just kind of having the slots kind of open is fine too in yeah. some windows I see are there is not even possible to open them up all the way it's just kind of mm -hmm. then you have those plantation shutters or kind of a I can never like know if I want to open them up or just kind of have the slots opened because mm -hmm. if you open them up they kind of open in a strange way Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah, I think that the shutters are kind of attractive. Yeah, and they have a they're they're good look great. to them too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, are there before we move on? Because I do want to jump around. You've got a really good wealth of knowledge here. Um, but um, are there any other like strange nuance things, such as refrigerator magnets, that kind of kind of get on your nerves a little bit? Hmm. <laughs> What's the one thing? <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, there is something. I just can't remember what it is. Well, maybe it always gets to me. Maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll come back to it in a minute. So, um, so do you generally like for the sellers to be there or not be there? I or? like to be as alone as possible. That's, <laughs> that's the, only only because like I'm more creative in my mind. If I'm distracted talking to someone, then that's going to distract my creativity. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. Mm -hmm. No, that makes good sense. And I, I like as, as alone as possible. And uh, you know, and, and I've done enough photography of my own listings over the years whenever you know on some of the bank owned properties or things that you know we want to take nice photos but they don't have to be perfect necessarily I'll, I'll do some of those kind of photos myself and, um, and and yeah it's really nice to be completely alone that you can you know number one stay focused like Keith mentioned and take you know I like to take pictures from each corner of every room because you never know which one is gonna look better than another and that ensures that you do have a good number of photos because I think it is a big mistake if you're, you know, putting photos in the MLS, and if your MLS allows 25 or 30 photos, however many you're allowed, you know, I, I think it, it's kind of problematic to only have 13 or, you know, some random number. You know, use every spot that you can, but, um, you know, it, it's definitely distracting whenever the seller's following you around because it, it it distracts you from getting the shot that you're trying to get, and you would be shocked how many things are reflective, how many surfaces right, are reflective. Right, mirrors are the worst. <laughs> you, you, never, you never realize how much mirrors are in a house until mm -hmm. you start getting photos of them. Well, I think um, mirrors are, are probably definitely the most reflective surface. Yeah, and then you got like <laughs> a stove thing going on in the mirror, no, in the, the shower door, those glass ones are pretty reflective too. Yep. Showered any doors for that matter. Yeah. And, um, you know, something I've noticed even standing outside the front of a home, Depending on where you're standing, you mm. could even get your own reflection in, in one of the windows. Yeah. Sometimes this is an MLS that kind of like degrades things a little bit. Like it's not super noticeable, but I'll usually go into Photoshop and try mm -hmm. to get those things out of the picture. Right. And you know, and in Photoshopping, which is a good point, 
you know, you can, you know, you can take somebody's, you know, reflection out of a, out of a window or whatever, but you can't actually change the characteristics of the property at all. So, right. you know, it's it's obviously a violation of the code of ethics, which is important for newer realtors to know if you're, you know, newer to the career. Um, that you know, if ever somebody were to edit like a power line out of the backyard or something like that, um, that that's obviously a giant giant no no. So, <laughs> so. So yeah, so as few people as possible. I mean, and you'd be shocked. I mean, the other there's so much stuff that's reflective, even like um, like a glossy finished um, wood furniture, like a dresser or something. I mean, there's things that reflect off of everything. So I think as a realtor, if you're hiring somebody to do your photos, it's better to just not be anywhere inside the premises. Shadows <laughs> as well. Yeah, and just someone sneaking into the foreground of the picture mm -hmm. and that ruining the entire shot when you go home <laughs> and didn't realize it. Oh. There is a person there. Yeah, and it, and it happens. I'm sure you've, you've seen it all. <laughs> so um, maybe for a second, because I know some of you that are, are listening um, would like to maybe get a little bit more involved in, in doing some of your own, like DIY, do your own photography. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about some characteristics of the equipment that's important to you, like lenses and, you know, camera gear. Right, so let's, we'll start with the lens. We always, if you're shooting, I recommend as wide as possible, but not a fisheye. So fisheye kind of like is like that skateboarder, really distorted, bubbly look to a image. And some people use that, and I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. But when you get a little bit wider, not as wide, it's like a 12 millimeter lens. I'm gonna go into some uh, lingo Absolutely. pretty soon. Absolutely. Um, like 12 millimeters, that's pretty wide to get uh, a good quality looking interior shot. Mm -hmm. Is there a per particular um, brand camera that you prefer now or uh, I'm working with Canon right now mm -hmm. um, in all my gear is Canon okay but I'm not against you I know you use Nikon I like and I'm, Nikon I think design. Sony's doing really good things with their cameras too right now mm -hmm. but the main thing is just the the it doesn't matter which camera you're using <laughs> it's, the, it's the right lens which is a 12 millimeter and is 10 10 10, is 10, to, 10 to 12 is decent mm -hmm. if you're on like a crop sensor um, once you get to the other cameras they are full frame and it might be like an 18 millimeter Okay. Is this ten um, fish high a little more than a twelve? It it depends. Some okay. like some ten millimeters might have that fish eye built into it almost. Okay. And so twelve is a good bet. And um, what about lighting for your photography? So I know some photographers use flash, and I'll use flash myself if I'm like on the on the go, kind of mm -hmm. speeding along. But mostly I use natural lighting. That's in the house, and I guess whatever lamp sources and exterior mm -hmm. window light we got going on so i happen to use a flash because i'm always moving quickly and on the go and like i said my photography doesn't need to be quite to the you know near the level that, that keith is shooting in but um some you know i take quick snaps with a quick flash and, and just going through real quickly but um you shoot raw and right jealous. so i shoot raw on a tripod i'm using hdr so high dynamic range um so i'll be taking a series of three pictures per picture <laughs> one really dark, one really light, and one normal. And then mm -hmm. I'll be able to merge those together to kind of make a, uh, one final photo. Interesting. So it's something I've, I've never <laughs> dove into yeah. at all. So you're it's using no, no, no lighting, no flash whatsoever. Just <laughs> whatever is available. Hmm. Very interesting. So let's you know keep moving through here. So I mean that's mostly interior stuff. We want the lights on. We want the windows kind of cracked open. We want the fans off. Um, how about outside? Is there anything aside from moving cars? Um, is there anything like in terms of landscaping? Or? Yeah, well, usually when I show up to someone's house, it's um, happened to be on like trash day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always trash bales outside. Right. Not so only, you get those in the garage too or something. Right. And and I've, you know, I guess it's inevitable. It happens. I've experienced it too. And then, you know, playing around with the drone a little bit, which we'll talk about more in a second. But, you know, it's always tough to do aerial shots when there's garbage cans all over the road. Right. You're going to have to <laughs> maneuver around some stuff. Um, we can, we'll get all that in a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But so for me, since I'm shooting in HDR, high dynamic, high dynamic range, it's okay. It's kind of, I can get away with a lot of different lighting scenarios outdoors, mm -hmm. um, but if you're shooting with just a, one, one shot, one flash or something, um, you might want to figure out the best time of day to show up at a house too. Yeah. Whether it's um, you want to do some twilight photos or you want to kind of have that house slightly cast in shade or all in light. 
Mm -hmm. Depends. Mm -hmm. no, that's, that's good info. And also oh, uh, there's trees too. Oof. Yeah, with those shadows, <laughs> trees and shadows. And you know, one thing that's important for all of us realtors to give a lot of thoughtful consideration to is the main photo that we choose to market a property with because it, the importance of that photo can't be overstated because literally, you know, customers are scrolling at whatever portal they're finding the information through whether it's Zillow, Realtor.com, whatever. And you know, it's, it's kind of for the lack of a better term, whoever has the best clickbait gets to click. And so, I mean, that photo might be the only exposure that, that a customer sees of the house to determine whether or not they want to click and learn more or just keep scrolling. So is there any particular method or is there any, you know, thought process that, that you go through when, you know, choosing what the best main photo is or? Um, I try to give some of the agents options for the first main photo. Mm -hmm. um, but typically I like to, I like clouds. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like trying to figure out who's it, who's it marketing towards. So if we're doing a, a million dollar plus listing, we might do twilight photos where it kind of has like more like richer kind of feel to it. But if we're doing something mm -hmm. under half a million, I feel like that richness isn't exactly, I don't, I kind of want to feel more homey, I guess, if it's under, mm -hmm. under that price. So we kind of have like those really nice clouds and daylight where it kind of looks like people can just move in and mm -hmm. go kind of, I'm not quite sure to explain it. Yeah, and, and so you're, do you sometimes, I mean, if it was you. But it's the front of the house. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be the front of the house usually. I know some MLSs do allow like a view or an aerial um, as the main photo, but um, right. I feel really strongly too that the colors need to be very bright and pop. Um, Whatever catches your eye. Yeah, because dull colors, you know, just get scrolled right on by, and it might be a great listing at a great price, but I think the chances of it you know, getting the attention that it deserves goes down dramatically um, if, if it's just a dull, uninspiring. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of dull and uninspiring, like, <laughs> first photos. <laughs> well, unsurprisingly, you know, I, you know, Sarasota is where we're at, and, um, you know, there, there's still a lot of cell phone photos out there. And like, you think, like, there wouldn't, like, cell phones are getting pretty good now. Like, you think there'd be, like, getting good by now these like mm -hmm. cell phone photos, but they're still somehow managing to make it like push it back for, like 10 years in the photo quality. Right. Yeah. And, and, and if, um, and a little pro tip, if you are still using your cell phone, that's, mm -hmm. that can be okay. Um, there are decent wide angle attachments that you can put on your cell phone. I actually have mm -hmm. the, uh, I think it's Zeiss, Zeiss, I'm saying Zeiss, it. I think Zeiss, Zeiss. I um, think. Don't yeah, quote me on that. Which is a great iPhone wide angle lens that I've actually used and it's worked worked great. But um, pro tip is uh, hold your camera horizontal. Don't, don't do a vertical cell phone right. shot that's not gonna not gonna be optimal so, <laughs> so what i'd like to um talk about maybe you know it's important to get a, a hot you know main photo with the bright colors that pop and if we can flip the switch a little bit it's a it's a um hot topic right now to drone or not to drone if you know how drones are appropriate um do you feel that drones are an, an important component to properly marketing a house these days yeah i think we have do drone for all the all the properties we do okay so and that's become a staple for our area for essentially yeah mm -hmm. i think mostly because in our area we're trying to show like maybe closest to the ocean closest to um some sort of community that they're in if they're next to uh the golfing community the water pond i think most of the time if you have like a like a lake view Mm -hmm. or pond view it's gonna you're gonna want to have that drone shot in there that show that in one shot because mm -hmm. it's kind of good to get perspectives and that's what the drone is good for yeah i couldn't agree more and you know it's neat if you go up just 20 or 30 feet you can have you know still rather than looking straight down you can still have the front of the house in the shot but just, you know see the water in the back background or right another thing too i one of the last um houses i did um, I used the drone actually mostly for that main shot where it looked like a regular camera but it was just like that 10 extra feet in the air. So we had those straight lines of the house. Mm -hmm. um, just another technique you use with the drone mm -hmm. is to, some people used to use a ladder and bring their camera up 10 feet and mm -hmm. kind of get those I straight remember. lines. Yeah. But now we can just use a drone if you want to. Right, and what kind of drone equipment do you prefer? Um, so I work with the DJI Mavic Pro. It's, it's a smaller drone, which is preferable. I know I've used the Phantom. Mm -hmm. And the, the smaller the drone, the more maneuverable it is. And mm -hmm. if you have trees, you're gonna to wanna to have that smaller, more, um, less wind resistant drone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you know, a, a broker um, consideration is if you do choose to have a drone, make sure that you have it all properly registered and have yourself, um, you know, through any, any um, proper 
classes or whatnot that are required and also be mindful of your proximity to airports and mm. um you know all the rules associated with flying a drone so that's my broker public service announcement for <laughs> for everyone so um so with the the drone work that you do and you know maybe we can flip the switch a little bit to um to videoing properties as well and we don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it but you you do integrate some drone video along with you know still your ground level video and, and maybe um is there any you know method to particular shots or any settings on the drone that make getting that video easier or um, as for settings, like you, they, DJI has a lot of like preset kind of fancy things you can do with it. I kind of go all manual mm -hmm. with uh, my shots now. I started with their kind of um, preset fun settings, but mm -hmm. so when I watch other people's drone videos, what makes me like cringe, I guess, is when I see like too much sharp movements in the drone because the drone's supposed to be like really smooth, that kind of mm -hmm. thing have like that one movement at a time, nothing too ex like exotic going on mm -hmm. with movements. Yeah, that's smart, I like that. Um, but since I'm doing a whole video with a bunch of different cuts, I can always cut out the spots that I want really easily. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, we can talk a about a little bit more video, but you do also take the still photography that you use and you do a little bit of design work on, you know, like brochures and things for print. Um, is there a particular type of a software that you recommend that you enjoy working with or um yeah you can use adobe photoshop or adobe illustrator mm -hmm. um i prefer illustrator because it has a really good like reusability workflow okay. but no i know it's not very common for most like i guess people mm -hmm. who usually use photoshop if i don't know about illustrator right right and um, unless you go to like art school or something right <laughs> And uh, for in terms of so you know so you got your your editing software and uh, for video so Adobe editing, Premiere Adobe Premiere for video editing okay mm -hmm. but I know Final Cut's very popular too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for most people okay and um, and when you're videoing in inside the the home is there any equipment that you use that make makes life a little bit easier for you or uh, a really good tripod and a gimbal and a gimbal so tell us about the gimbal so a gimbal is kind of like a like a electronic stabilizer for your camera okay so you can just kind of hold it and the camera doesn't bounce around basically. right yeah you just kind of is there any method to how you walk through the house do you start somewhere and finish somewhere every time or? um it, it changes depending on the, light, the layout mm -hmm. but I preferably like to start at the entrance and either go to the kitchen or go to the master bedroom first okay but usually the kitchen okay so in like the living room area seems reasonable. and then i kind of like touch into the little rooms after that to kind of throw a little bit of sparkles of that Mm -hmm. in there you'll probably if you ever if you go to our preferred short page you can see some examples of those videos and i do recommend that because the the work is pretty outstanding and it'll give you a good taste and um you know just what keith's background is and you know so we've got our we've got our checklist we've got our you know our sheet to share with sellers to help them make sure that it that it is photo ready and you know again the main thing is is that the photos are going to and the video quality is going to directly relate to however much preparation somebody's willing to put into it and uh, i'm sure you know keith can attest to the fact there's you know plenty of times whenever we unfortunately show up at a house and you know somebody is you know they're they're stressful you know it's a stressful time when you're when you're moving and getting ready to sell and everything anyway but you know still when we show up it's just a disaster when the beds are unmade and you know there's just there's stuff everywhere and you know there's just no way that it's going to be a great outcome in that kind of a situation so you know maybe is there anything else that's coming to mind did you remember that one point that kind of <laughs> that you couldn't remember earlier is it still gone <laughs> no i don't got it um but i guess the best thing to do is to give yourself extra time if things do like come up that you didn't expect Mm -hmm. Like I know for me, like I want to get this house shot in one hour, and then I get there, like oh, this is not going to take. This is going to be way longer than an hour, mm -hmm. only because you like there was no like decluttering done. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of want to have like good photos under my name, so mm -hmm. so when I go to the house, I got to really take my time and actually help clean up. So some houses are kind of difficult where there's so much clutter, there's nowhere to put that clutter. Mm -hmm. So you have to like move the clutter as you go, mm -hmm. and then put it back, and then kind of go from one room to the next room while you have to clean up each room as you go. Right. And that's where the time kind of crunch comes in. So just give yourself extra time if that kind of situation happens. 
I have another question. Um, if you're, you know, taking a photo of a, of a living room that has like a seating area arranged that it works for, for you know, seating and, it, and it, the room flows, but you're taking the picture of like a back of a couch or something, mm -hmm. does, does it ever make sense? Do you ever like move a couch or chair out of the way just to get a photo and then put it back? I have, usually not the couch, but usually the chair. If there's a, mm -hmm. some giant chair in your way, I'll definitely move that out of the way where it doesn't make sense unless you're looking at a picture. Mm -hmm. like, okay, that makes sense now. I can actually see the, how the, the space works. Another uh, option is to change have the height of your camera, but preferably just move the furniture itself. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's not possible, so maybe just change the side of the room you're taking the photo on. Yeah, yeah, and you know, the thing, like, like Keith mentioned, and I'll just reiterate it, because it is a good point, is you know, if, if you're hiring a photographer or even doing it yourself and you're only budgeting a certain amount of time, you know, if it's possible, um, try to meet the seller or arrive at the property at least a half hour or an hour before the photographer is scheduled to arrive. And um, the reason is I can't tell you how many times that like I've ended up, you know, broom sweeping a sidewalk or the walkway up to the door, what, you know, just because there's just a mess of leaves everywhere. And, you know, all that kind of stuff, it's going to show up in the photos and you, you, you know, you'd want to put forth the property and, and market it in the best possible light that you can. So, if it's at all possible, I do recommend, you know, get there a little bit ahead of time before the before the photographer arrives, because you never know. I mean, in this business, we end up doing all kinds of stuff and you might be sweeping sidewalks, making beds, you know, decluttering, you might be doing all kinds of stuff and you want to have a little bit of a of a buffer there. And I know like some of the really big houses, you start like getting to like 6,000 square feet kind of thing. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes just to turn the lights on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many light switches. That's, That's what right. smart houses are good for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the best thing imaginable for from a photographer's perspective is if the seller can have all the lights on in advance before before we all show up. Then, uh, then yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Make me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that comes to mind that you've learned? Anything that I should have directed the conversation towards and didn't? Um, that that you think is important for people to know? Well, you mentioned the uh, the drone section where mm -hmm. like dodging some trash or. Whatnot. Right, right, right. So how do you objects. how do you get around um, you know taking good good drone photos whenever there's ugly stuff going on? Just change the angle. <laughs> we had, like for Ir when Irma came around, there's so much landscape like landscaping in front of everyone's house. So you right. really just had to either go lower or kind of just change the angle up somehow. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely you know it's part science, part art for sure. Right. Uh, yeah. And I feel like, so, when you're talking about photoshopping things, it should be mostly for anything that's not a permanent fixture, mm -hmm. like mostly in my reflection in the window, but maybe, I'm not, I never I haven't done this, but what do you think about photoshopping, like landscaping, um, that kind of stuff, like for Irma, if there was a bunch of... Like to remove a pile of debris? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think... Um, Fundamentally, I don't think I have a problem with that. I don't know what the official ruling would be, but because it's not like you're removing an eyesore that's like a permanent fixture, and you mm -hmm. know by now, by now all of it is all basically been removed and gone. So that's that's a good. I don't have a fundamental problem with that because I don't think it's it's deceptive. But um, I don't know for sure <laughs> what the ruling would be off the cuff. So. We never talked about staging. We didn't talk about staging. So do you feel <laughs> the staging is important? Um, for most houses. So definitely furniture looks better than... Furniture always looks better. And how, if, do you, how do you feel about virtual staging? If it's done well, then it's good. If it's not done well, then don't bother. Yeah, and, and I, I haven't seen a lot of good examples of virtual staging done well. It's a tricky thing to do. Mm -hmm. But I, I actually have seen some really good virtual staging. Yeah, and in our market too, if you're kind of in the Sarasota, um, Charlotte County area maybe, um, I, I have a good recommendation. There's a lady that for an average size home just does about a thousand thousand dollars a month um so i do recommend staging for for sure so um anything else you can think of my man that's all i got well we we do appreciate your time and um you know i, I think that if you just give a little forethought to the way your your photos and, and videos are going to turn out and try to be as prepared in advance for that as possible i think that you'll reap big rewards in your business and um, of course i'm always always available for any of your thoughts or input or questions if you need any help with anything and um perhaps maybe somebody has some questions for keith or myself right now i'm not seeing any questions come through as of right now guys well good well you know like i mentioned anytime at all that anybody could use some help or some guidance um i'm 
more than happy to help. And I do appreciate you spending a little time with this, getting this information. And again, I appreciate your time, Keith. That's, I think, hopefully great info for everybody. So Robert, you're welcome. Robert, where's the best place that, that your agents can reach you if they do have any questions pertaining to what Keith spoke about today? Absolutely. You can always send an email to robert at robertmilligan.com or call 941-999-1179. And um, you know, it's just always a pleasure. We've got a great group of agents and I'm really enthusiastic to build our agent base and support them and go around and uh, get around to each of our markets and meet people and um, just just all build and build big in 2018. It's going to be a great year. Absolutely. Keep, keep your eye open for the happy hours and other little gatherings that you're going to be having. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. That is correct. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, with that being said, I'd like to say thank you again to Robert and Keith for yet for letting us know how important that that a nice a nice photograph speaks of our of our listings. So with that being said, gentlemen, have a great day and the rest of you, Florida, have a great week. Thank, thank you, everybody. You so Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.